COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungson, Pray for us. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, Jesus stretches out His hands to touch us, to make us experience His compassion, and to make us feel His healing love. Let us prepare ourselves to experience the healing power of Jesus through this Holy Mass. Let us be sorry for our many sins, and let us beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the, le the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, Unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. has arisen in our midst. God has visited His people. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the most dreaded diseases in human history is leprosy. But for the Jews, leprosy is not just a physical disease. For the Jews, leprosy carries with it spiritual and religious dimension. Anyone who has leprosy is not only considered sick, anyone who has leprosy, according to the Jewish mind, is also considered unclean, impure. Hindi lamang may sakit ang ketongin. Siya rin ay itinuturing ng mga Hudyo bilang marumi. That is why in our first reading today, we heard what the book of Leviticus has to say to lepers. Ano ba ang dapat gawin ng mga ketongin? According to the law, which we heard in our first reading today, lepers should be sent out of the town. They should not live within the town. They should dwell apart, making their abode outside the camp. Hindi sila pwedeng manirahan kasama ng karamihan. Dapat doon sila sa labas sa malayo sa mga tao. No one should touch them and they should touch no one. And if in case they are walking and there are people around, they should shout, unclean, unclean, as a warning to the people to stay away because a leper is passing by. Kapag maglalakad siya at may mga tao, kailangan siyang sumigaw, marumi, marumi, para layuan siya ng mga tao. This they had to do because anyone that they touch or anyone who touches them will also be considered unclean and impure. In our gospel today, a leper came to Jesus. But instead of moving away from Jesus, this leper came close to Jesus. Hindi siya lumayo. Lumapit pa siya kay Jesus. 
And instead of shouting, unclean, unclean, he begged Jesus, if you wish, you can make me clean. And the reaction of Jesus is surprising. Instead of avoiding the leper, instead of saying to the leper, do not come close, you are forbidden to come close. No? Wag kang lalapit, bawal kang lumapit sa akin. Instead of saying those words, what Jesus did was to stretch out his hand and touched the leper. Hindi po na Jesus yung taong may ketong. And by doing that, Jesus put himself in a dangerous situation of being contaminated by leprosy and by being considered unclean and impure. Sa panahon natin ngayon, siguro ang tawag dito ay yung distancing. Yung mga ketongin dapat layuan, hindi dapat lapitan, kasi baka magkahawahan. Pero si Jesus, sa halip na layuan yung may sakit, hinawakan pa niya. At sa ginawa niyang yun, pwede sabihin sa kanya, Ikaw, Jesus, ay marumi din. Ikaw, Jesus, ay may sakit din. Nahawahan ka na ng ketong dahil hinawakan mo siya. But the opposite happened. Instead of Jesus being contaminated by the impurity of the leper, it was Jesus who contaminated the leper with his purity. And because of that, the leper was healed. The leper became clean. Hindi si Jesus ang nahawahan, si Jesus ang nanghawa ng kalinisan, kaya yung ketongin ay gumaling. My dear brothers and sisters, this tells us that Jesus is not afraid to touch us. Jesus is not afraid to touch our uncleanness, our dirt, and our impurities. Jesus is not afraid to touch our wounds and our pains. Jesus is not afraid to touch our darkness and our sinfulness. Hindi tayo pinandidirian ni Jesus. Kaya nang hawakan kahit na yung pinakamaruming bahagi ng ating buhay. Kaya niya tayong yakapin kahit sa ating pinakamabigat na kasalanan. Hindi hindi sasabihin ni Jesus dahil madumi ka, lalayuan kita. Doon pa nga sa ating karumihan, doon pa nga sa ating kasalanan, lalong lumalapit sa si Jesus para iparana sa atin ang kanyang habag at pagpapatawad. Jesus will always stretch out His hands to touch us because He knows that it will not be us who will contaminate Him. Hindi takot si Jesus kasi alam ni Jesus kahit na anong bigat ng kasalanan mo, hindi ako yung mahahawahan ng kasalanan. Alam ni Jesus na sa paglapit sa atin, tayo ang mahahawa sa kanyang kabutihan, sa kanyang kabanalan. Si Jesus ang mahahawa sa atin para tayo maging malinis katulad niya. St. Paul in our second reading today follows that example of Jesus and he invites us to follow him as he follows Jesus. St. Paul says in our second reading, Be imitators of me as I am an imitator of Christ. Tularan mo ako sapagkat tinutularan ko si Jesus. 
at paano niyang tinularan si Jesus sa pamamagitan ng pagyakap, sa pamamagitan ng pag-abot sa mga itinuturing na marumi. Remember that St. Paul is considered as the apostle to the Gentiles, to the non-Jews, sa mga hindi Hudyo. And for the Jews, the Gentiles are considered unclean, impure, sapagkat sa kanilang pananaw, sila bilang bayan ng Diyos ang malinis at dalisay. But St. Paul reached out to the Gentiles and because they were contaminated by the purity of faith in Jesus, the Gentiles are also considered clean, pure, and worthy to be children of God. Tayo po hindi mga Hudyo, pero tayo ay bahagi ng sambayanan ng Diyos sapagkat sa ating dalisay at malinis na pananampalataya, katulad ng ipinahayag ni San Pablo sa mga hentil, tayo'y ginawang malinis at dalisay ni Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, like Jesus and like St. Paul, let us not be afraid to touch those who are considered by society as unclean. Let us not be afraid to touch those who are judged by society as sinners. Katulad ni Jesus, wag po tayong matakot na lapitan yung mga itinuturing na marurumi ng lipunan Huwag tayong matakot makisama sa mga hinuhusgahan bilang makasalanan. Remember, Jesus mingled with sinners. He ate with sinners. He entered the houses of sinners. And He was not afraid because He knew He will not be contaminated by them. In the many interactions of Jesus with sinners, what happened? The sinners converted and repented of their sins. Nahawahan sila ng kabutihan ni Jesus. Kaya sana huwag tayong matatakot. Abutin yung mga marurumi, yung mga makasalanan, yung mga ipinagtatabuyan ng lipunan. That is our mission as Christians as we follow Jesus. That is our mission as church. The church is not only for the good and the holy. Huwag natin sasabihin na, eh, bakit ka pumapasok ng simbahan, hindi ka naman banal? Bakit simba ka ng simba, eh, ang sama ng ugali mo? Precisely because we are sinners, the more that we should need to go to Jesus. Because we are sinners, the church has room for us. The church should stretch out her hands to sinners, to those who are unclean, and even to those who are angry with the church. Ganyan kasi yung ginawa ni Jesus. Abutin yung mga malalayo kay Jesus. Abutin yung mga may tampo kay Jesus at sa simbahan, abutin kahit na yung mga galit at isinusumpa ang Diyos at ang kanyang simbahan. Ang simbahan hindi lamang para sa mababait at mga banal. Ang simbahan para sa ating lahat lalong-lalo na sa ating mga kasalanan, lalong-lalo na sa ating marumi dahil sa ating masamang gawain. Kapag tayo'y nagkasala, huwag tayong lalayo kay Jesus, lalo pa tayong lumapit sa Kanya. And as we imitate Jesus 
in stretching out our hands, reaching out and touching those who are unclean and impure, let us be sure that they are the ones contaminated by the goodness and holiness of Jesus that we bring. Lalapit tayo sa kanila, hindi para tayo yung mahawahan, kundi para tayo ang manghawa ng kabutihan at ng kabanalan ng Diyos. Baka sa ating pamilya, sasabihin ng inyong mga anak, magsimba po tayo ngayon dahil linggo o mag-online mas po tayo. Baka yung magulang pa ang magsasabing, wag na, delikado. No? E online mas na lang po, wag nang online mas. No? May magandang pelikula ngayon, manood na lang tayo. No? Yung mga anak, baka sa halip na sabihin, hawahan ng kanilang magulang, hindi po, magsimba talaga tayo dahil linggo. E baka sabihin, oh, sige, manood na nga lang tayo, maganda yung pelikula lang yan. Nako, sino ang nahawahan? Nahawahan ba ng kabutihan yung magulang na tinatamad magsimba? O nahawahan ng hindi pagsisimba yung mga anak na gustong magsimba? Sa magkakaibigan, kapag niyayaya ka ng kaibigan mo na gumawa ng masama, magbisyo, magsugal, pumunta sa hindi tamang lugar, gumawa ng hindi mabuting gawain. Hawahan mo siya ng iyong kabutihan. Huwag ikaw ang magpatangay sa kasamaan. Sa ating trabaho, baka sinasabihan ka ng iyong mga kasamahan, wala kang pakisama. Ayaw mo kasing tumanggap ng lagay. Ayaw mong gumawa ng mga pailalim na bagay. Sa halip na ikaw yung mahawahan, hawahan mo sila ng katapatan, ng kabutihan at pagiging matuwid. Sa ating mga pananaw sa buhay, sa ating pananampalataya bilang mga katoliko, baka merong mga katuroan na naririnig tayo na medyo taliwas sa ating pananampalataya. Sa halip na tayo ang mahawahan ng paniniwala sa mga maling katuruan, hawahan natin sila ng katotohanan ng ating pananampalataya. Let us contaminate each other with goodness, with righteousness, with holiness, and with love. Sana tayo bilang mga Kristiyano, Huwag matatakot pasukin yung mga madidilim at maruruming aspeto ng ating buhay at ng buhay ng ating lipunan upang sa gayon madala natin doon ang liwanag ni Jesus. Kaya malaki ang hamon, malaki ang misyon para sa ating lahat, lalong-lalo na po sa inyo bilang mga laiko, sa inyong pamumuhay araw-araw sa lipunan. May mga nagsasabing, wag, pong, wag mong papasukin yung politika, marumi yan. E kung walang mabuting kristyanong papasok sa politika, paanong madadala doon ang liwanag ni Jesus? Kaya yung mabubuting mga kristyano na merong paninundigan at pananampalataya sa Diyos, Pasukin yung pamumuno, pasukin yung politika, at kayo ang magdala doon ng katapatan, katuwiran, liwanag ni Jesus. Kapag meron sa ating lipunan, sa ating pinagtatrabahuhan, ng mga maduduming mga aspeto, huwag natin sasabihin, huwag mong mapakialaman yan. Baka madamay ka pa dyan, lalo nating pasukin at tiyakin natin ang dadalhin natin ay liwanag ni Jesus at hindi tayo ang mahahawahan ng kadiliman ng aspetong yon sa ating lipunan o pinagtatrabahuhan. 
kung mayroong aspeto sa ating buhay na madilim, marumi, hayaan nating pumasok doon si Jesus upang hawahan tayo ng kalinisan at kabanalan. My dear brothers and sisters, let us contaminate each other with the goodness and holiness and the love of Jesus. Today is Valentine's Day. Kaya marami sa inyo nakapula. But I hope that as we celebrate Valentine's Day today, let us grow from the romantic concept of love. Ang pag-ibig hindi lamang yung pakilig-kilig. Ang pag-ibig ay yung pagdanais ng kabutihan ng iba. And that we could do if we desire what is good for others by contaminating them with the goodness of God. Pag hinawahan mo ang iyong kapwa ng kabutihan, pinakikita mo ang iyong pagmamahal. Pero kapag ang pinahawan natin sa isa't isa ay kasamaan, yan ba maituturing na pagmamahal? My dear brothers and sisters, in the encounter between Jesus the Pure One and the impurity of the leper, it was the leper who got contaminated by the purity of Jesus. In the encounter between the pure faith of St. Paul and the impurity of the Gentiles, the Gentiles got contaminated with the pure faith of St. Paul and so they became children of God. We pray that in our encounter with the world, we may also contaminate one another with the goodness, righteousness, holiness, light, and love of Jesus. Maghawahan tayo ng kabutihan. And if you are able to do that, then we will be healed. The whole world will be healed. Please all stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us make our prayers to the Father, asking Him to renew the cleansing and healing grace of His Son in our world today. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church of God in every place, that she may shine forth as a community of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government agencies working for public health, that they may succeed in wiping out the scourge of disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have neglected the sacraments, that they may return to the healing peace of personal confession. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those studying for the priesthood, that they may prepare wisely and well for the permanent grace of ordination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
that Christ may cleanse them and bring them to glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. God our Father, your gifts of healing and peace encourage us in our prayers. Grant what we seek in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please all be seated. stand our father pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to god the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praising glory of his name for our goods and the good of all his holy church may this oblation O lord we pray cleanse and renew us and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, <clears throat> the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess, profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please all kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please all stand. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food which we truly live, by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a while. Unang-una po, nais kong magpasalamat sa inyong lahat na pumunta ngayong umagang ito dito sa Manila Cathedral upang makapagsimba ngayong linggong ito. Maraming salamat din po sa mga nakatayo sa likod at sa labas sa inyong pagtsatsaga para makaisa sa pagdiriwang. At salamat po sa inyong pakikisa sa ating mga protocols na pinatutupad para sa kaligtasan nating lahat. We also want to thank those who are joining this Mass online. We thank you for continuously supporting the Manila Cathedral through your donations, your love offerings that you send us. Nais din po namin pasalamatan ang iba't ibang mga social media platforms, Facebook pages na nagbabahagi ng pagdiriwang ng misang ito para maabot natin ng mas marami nating mga kapatid at sila'y makabahagi sa pagdiriwang ng banal na misa. Pasalamat din po tayo sa ating mga uh, staff and uh, servants ng Manila Cathedral na naglingkod sa pagdiriwang na ito upang tiyakin ang kaligtasan nating lahat. This coming Wednesday will be Ash Wednesday. We will enter into the holy season of Lent. And our Masses here at the Manila Cathedral on Ash Wednesday will be at 7.30 in the morning, 12.10 in the afternoon, and 5.30 in the afternoon. So we will have three Masses on Ash Wednesday, and all these Masses will be live-streamed in our 
uh, Facebook page and in our YouTube channel. At uh, sa mga hindi naman po makakaisa sa pagdiriwang sa Ash Wednesday, you could uh, uh, download no, from uh, the pages of the Archdiocese of Manila the rite that could be used in your families. No? Meron pong ritual na pwedeng gawin sa ating pamilya sa araw ng Ash Wednesday para makabahagi tayo sa pagdiriwang ng pagsisimula ng kwaresma. Pwede tayong magsunog din ng palaspas, ng mga dahon, upang ipahid, upang ibudbod sa, sa crown, no? uh, sa ating bundunan sa araw ng Ash Wednesday. And we wish to remind everyone that Ash Wednesday is a day of fasting and abstinence. Those who are 18 years old up to 60 years old are bound to fast on Ash Wednesday, which means that we will eat only one full meal that day. And those who are 14 years old and above are bound to abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday. Hindi kakain ng karne sa araw ng Ash Wednesday. But these are all the external manifestations of our generosity, of our sacrifice. No? Tayo po'y nagpa-fasting and abstinence, hindi upang makatipid o makaipon. No? Ano man po ang ating matitipid o maiipon sa ating pagsasakripisyo ay ibabahagi natin sa ating kapwa. That is why on Ash Wednesday, our collection will be given to Fast to Feed. Ito po ay isang feeding program para sa malnourished children. And every Sunday of Lent, we will have Alay Kapwa Collection. Ano man yung naipon natin sa ating mga pagsasakripisyo sa buong linggo, let us give to the Alay Kapwa Collection that will be shared to others who are in need or who are also suffering especially during this time. So, Lent is not just a period of sacrifice. No? Wala pong kahulugan yung pagsasakripisyo kung hindi tayo gagawa ng kabutihan para sa kapwa. Magsasakripisyo ako para makagawa ako ng kabutihan sa iba. And finally, I continue to invite everyone to wear our mission cross, especially during this year of the 500th anniversary of arrival of the arrival of Christianity in our country. No? Yun pong ating mission cross ay pagpapakita ng ating identity as Christians and as children of God. No? Ito po'y pagmamalaki sa mundo no? na ako ay Kristiyano, na ako ay naniniwala kay Jesus. Kaya huwag po natin ikahiya na tayo'y mga katoliko, na tayo'y mga kristyano. Ipakita natin ito sa pamamagitan ng pagsusuot ng krus. And let the mission cross also remind us of our mission na tayo'y maging mga saksi ni Jesus sa mundo. Magandang paalaala po yan kapag tayo'y natutukso, kapitan niyo yung mission cross at maalala niyo hindi ko dapat gawin ito Dahil ako'y Kristiyano. That is our mission. And that is a very good way of celebrating our 500th uh, anniversary of being Christians. Naway pagpalain po ng Panginoon ang linggong ito at nawa ay ihanda niya tayo sa ating pagpasok sa Kwaresma. Naway gawin ng Diyos na dalisay at malinis ang ating mga puso. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord, 
by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.